British envoy James Spiven is holding a significant meeting with Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi in Ahmedabad. Now, this visit from the British High Commissioner signals a major shift in the UK's diplomatic stance towards Modi. This is the first time a British official is meeting Modi after three British persons of Indian origin were killed in the post Gothra riots in 2002. Our associate editor, Atish Shivasta, will now take us through the significance of this meeting. Atish, is Modi looking at this as a shot in the arm before the assembly elections for him? Narendra Modi to prove that the isolation which he's been facing from the international country is right is on a step forward to be over because we know that British government hasn't had any kind of communication with Narendra Modi since 2002 in fact three British nationals were also killed in 2002 Goda right since then there has been no communication but this is a clear step forward an extension of cooperation for trade and business related cooperation with Gujarat this will definitely boost the morale of Narendra Modi because he knows for sure the only hindrance which he has for 2014 is the international and national acceptance. At least international acceptance has begun and national acceptance will also soon follow the suit because this particular thing where he will right. go around the town and say that I have got recognition from foreign countries, I have got recognition from other countries and why, what is the problem with our country? There is nothing which happened, there is no case against me. Mm -hmm. So these are the things which will definitely help Narendra Modi and the timing of this entire cooperation extension by UK is going to benefit him a lot. All right, let me go across to our correspondent Mosiki Acharya now as well. Mosiki, what are the expectations that Modi's government has from this meeting really? Well, this is kind of an endorsement that Narendra Modi was seeking, especially with his recent trips to Japan and China. Let's not forget that he was a persona non grata by most of the developed countries, which include superpower like the United States of America as well as the United Kingdom here. But now that the British High Commission has... a uh, extended a hand of friendship with Narendra Modi and with Narendra Modi having tweeted that God is dead. It couldn't have come at a better time also because elections are just around the corner, especially with most of the 2002 riot cases still pending in the court where uh, Narendra Modi too was questioned. When a country like UK extends a hand of friendship, says that they are willing to uh, seek bilateral trade as well as open a dialogue between the two uh, countries, especially with Gujarat, which was uh, not, uh, it, which was avoided for a pretty long time, it comes as a huge endorsement. Right. And it is a setback for the activists who have been lobbying mm -hmm. very hard to deny Narendra Modi visa. While U.S. as well as Germany have continued to uh, say, uh, stand by their uh, uh, right. decision to not grant Narendra Modi mm -hmm. a visa, UK is the first country which has initiated this. Mm -hmm. It will be. Uh, interesting to see if US and Germany and other developed countries to follow this standard. Right. Right, Mosuki. And that's the important point over here that we'll put to our strategic affairs editor, Gaurav Savan. Gaurav, uh, as Mosuki pointed out, there no change in the stand of Germany. It's made it quite clear. The US has also not shown any inclination of changing its stand on Narendra Modi. Is that something that will continue to bother Narendra Modi? Or is this endorsement that we are seeing from the UK something that uh, he is uh, looking at in positive light and expecting others to open up to? Well, uh, you know, United Kingdom, uh, the, the High Commissioner uh, going to Gujarat is in line with what, uh, you know, the Foreign Office Minister said on the 11th of October, where he said that I've asked the High Commissioner to go there and seek broader engagement uh, for, uh, you know, closer uh, ties and better cooperation and bilateral relations, uh, you know, between United Kingdom and, uh, uh, and all in, and, uh, you know, seek more perhaps investment, closer ties uh, in, in Gujarat. So there is a broad range of interest that they would be, uh, you know, talking about. At the same time, uh, uh, you know, the statement very categorically states that the issue of human rights and justice for those killed in Gujarat remains a priority and remains the priority and they would, uh, you know, uh, seek uh, to ensure that justice takes place. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the same time, there is, there is no, uh, you know, the statement that says that unless that happens, this will not happen. For 10 years, since 2002 to 2012, engagement was there, but at a very low level. Uh, you know, while there is a British Council library in the in Gujarat and uh, there is a trade office, that tra that relations wasn't at the level at which they hope to take it after today's meeting. Today's meeting uh, is where they hope to take this uh, engagement altogether mm -hmm. to the next level. And and uh, you know, perhaps as many. Uh, 
analysts are looking at it maha uh, this in a way is green lighting narendra modi's uh, you know the, the, the acceptance uh, that uh, it, that was denied since 2002 all there right. appears to be a change china had a very mm-hmm. pragmatic approach uh, all along uh, uh, japan had a different approach now with the united kingdom perhaps you know uh, the the wall is breaking all right that wall may be breaking uh, but uh, is that uh, something that that is the only worry for modi at the moment because uh, narendra modi has himself had to make many uh, changes uh, let's get in a word from artish on that artish he met the rss top brass yesterday he's been making amends for what he's been doing wrong really uh, in the political setup uh, within his own party so today's endorsement is that something that he can really tom tom within his party well he is expected to do that because we all know that whatever narendra modi does he will definitely talk about it in a large way but point is what about 2014 he needs to set his route for 2014 and these kind of things will definitely boost his morale and will actually give him kind of acceptance because he knows for sure that his unacceptability still exists as far as local parties regional parties are concerned because we know for sure what jdu has said as far as the promotion of narendra modi in the party is concerned they have reservations and what next what kind of parties will extend the support to narendra modi whether he will get uh, support from other regional parties as well those are things that narendra modi also is worried about but we know for sure that rss has given a nod to narendra modi that he may become the face for the party 2014 but everything right. will be decided by gujarat <laughs> after gujarat elections gujarat elections something which is very very important for modi All right let's get in a word also from political analyst Sanjeev Shrivastav Sanjeev uh, Narendra Modi may be starting to get some sort of international acceptance with the uh, UK high commissioner visiting him today but his fate clearly will be decided by the mood of the nation and that uh, has that changed really See definitely these things will make a difference they will give him uh, some kind of a talking point he was so far even in even a paria for the western uh, nations like uk and usa though he was accepted by canada and australia but the uh, uk and usa were the two big uh, citadels which ne- which which needed to fall for narendra modi for a for a wider audience across the world so he was he was welcome in china he was welcome in japan but these were the two major countries now with uk because usa and uk usually go in tandem so maybe uk is showing the lead and uh, usa will follow so it, so it it will be some kind of a big uh, big morale booster a big talking point and again the bjp and narendra modi can talk about see the taboos around him are dropping and uh, uh, are going away across the world so why keep uh, having him as some kind of an untouchable in indian politics so it will definitely spark off some kind of a debate it will also help right. him Mm-hmm. Help him give, uh, give a couple of more arguments in his favor that he is perhaps in 21st century India is one of the more talked about, more accepted CEO right. business like figures mm-hmm. with which the rest of the world want to do business. So why don't the rest of Indians also want to do business? Sanjeev, I'll come yeah. back to you. I'm interrupting you for just a bit because uh, let's tell our viewers that what we are showing them on the television screens right now are live visuals that we're getting from Gandhi Nagar. This is the meeting between uh, Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi and the British High Commissioner, who's gone uh, to call on uh, the Gujarat Chief Minister after a green signal from his country that. came in on the 11th of october from the uk asking the high commissioner to go and seek broader ties uh, with gujarat clearly business is on uk's mind and these are visuals uh, that are coming in from inside the meeting let me go back uh, to political analyst sanjeev shrivastav sanjeev uh, you said that this could perhaps signal a change in stance of other con- countries as well especially the us uh, but germany has already made it pretty clear that uh, there is going to be no change in their stand so are we seeing different countries uh, treating this issue differently depending on what is important to them in the case of uk we are clearly seeing business being on their mind i think so see there's two interesting one is the political issue uh, for for the for countries like uk and us and like you just mentioned germany so there is this political issue they have their own domestic constituency they have an international image of uh, theirs to um, to protect and further so they they will be changing their equation we saw we modi like that but at the same time they also have to keep in mind the changing dynamics within india so both uh, both in terms of gujarat 
and also the entire country so again two factors come into play gujarat is being talked about as one of the most uh, industrially developed and business friendly states in the country maha we must re- we must realize that in the last one year if you look at international press say if you take for example the economist now the economist in last 12 14 months has done around 6 to 8 stories on narendra modi in comparison it has done a couple of stories on manmohan singh maybe a story or two on uh, rahul gandhi and the congress party so let's we cannot grudge away or you know just wish away the fact that narendra modi remains right now one of the big talking points from india on the international platform mm-hmm. so if people who want to do business with gujarat and in gujarat need to engage with modi and with the way things are in the west you know uk is one of the economies which is slowing down which is facing a lot of headwinds so if they want to do business they need gujarat further than that you know they want to they want to hedge their bets 2014 it look very churlish if for some reason narendra modi is there on the national stage in 2014 right. and countries as big as the uk and usa are not doing business with him mm-hmm. so they are trying to also test waters gauge the public mood right. you know, these are these are small steps which can also be taken back mm-hmm. if need be so there is there is a lot of international diplomacy and business interests political realism involved in all